Hello, O'Hara. It's Father Ron. So I hope that you're all doing well. As you know, we're moving toward Holy Week, but of course, this is a preparation for Holy Week that's much different than any preparation that we've ever encountered before. I know that it's strange for me. I'm preparing liturgies that have no people present, and I'm trying to figure out how best to live stream them. And I'm learning some interesting things about social media and its capabilities, but I'm thankful for what we're able to do. So we are indeed in unprecedented times, and I know that there's a great ache in your hearts and not being able to attend these liturgies in person and there's a great ache in my own heart for not being able to, to be present to you during this time. But nonetheless, I encourage you to enter into these spiritually and to follow them virtually on Facebook and the ways that the school is providing for you as you are able. I know that the school is preparing some nice activities that you might do in order to enter more deeply into Holy Week. But I'm going to focus here on some, uh, some things talking about the significance of Holy Week and how you might stay connected with St. Mary's liturgies during this time. So Holy Week is filled with many wonderful things. And of course we begin this Sunday, April 5th, with Passion or Palm Sunday, which celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And we will read a gospel about that around, uh, around that time of the blessing of the palm branches. And then, very shortly later, we'll read the Passion account of Jesus' suffering and death. It's quite a contrast. We can read a kind of dramatic account of the gospel during that liturgy. And as for the palms, we'll, we will have a lot of them here at St. Mary, and we will figure out a way that you might be able to come and pick some up for yourselves. One thing you might notice is behind me, you see that big purple thing over there. That's actually our large crucifix, and it's covered over during this time uh, leading up to and during Holy Week. And it's a reminder that we're preparing um, to lay Jesus in the tomb, preparing to celebrate Jesus, um, his life and his death. And of course, we'll anticipate looking forward to his resurrection. So then there will be Masses during the week that will help prepare us for the sacred Triduum. And Triduum is just a Latin word that means the Holy Three Days. And these three holy days, of course, are Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, which leads us to the Easter Vigil and then Easter Sunday. So here are some things that normally lead up to those three holy days. Normally on Monday of Holy Week, the priests would gather with the Archbishop for a meal and the Chrism Mass, which would involve a renewal of our priestly promises. But obviously, because of the coronavirus, we're not able to go this year. The Chrism Mass is a special Mass where the Archbishop will bless the holy oils, the oil that is used from the sacrament or for the sacrament of anointing of the sick the oil that is used for the blessing of those coming into the church, called the oil of salvation or the oil of the catechumens. And then finally, the sacred chrism is blessed, which is where the chrism mass gets its name. It's a special oil that's used for baptism, confirmation, and the ordination of priests and bishops. And then I would have you pay special attention to the readings for Wednesday of Holy Week, it's nicknamed Spy Wednesday because of Judas's betrayal, which we will hear about in the gospel for that day. We will live stream the Tuesday and Wednesday Masses at 12.15 p.m. on our Facebook page. I will show where you can search for that on Facebook down below. On Holy Thursday, we have the Mass of the Lord's Supper and this is the first day of the sacred triduum, those holy three days. We will live stream that at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page. And normally during that mass, we would have the washing of the feet of some of the parishioners at the mass to imitate what our Lord did on that evening. But that will be omitted this time. 
The evening would normally end with the Blessed Sacrament being taken to an altar of repose, and then the altar would be stripped, and everything is removed out of the sanctuary, preparing for our Lord's passion and death. And then Good Friday is the only day of the year that Mass is not celebrated in the world. We will have Stations of the Cross that day at 12.15 p.m., then a Good Friday service at 3 p.m., which is basically a liturgy of the Word, with veneration of the cross and the reception of Holy Communion that is from the consecrated hosts that were consecrated on Holy Thursday. Both the Stations of the Cross and that three o'clock veneration of the cross service will be streamed live on Facebook as well. The Easter Vigil will begin at 8.30 p.m. on Saturday evening when it gets dark. We will have a lighting of the Easter fire and from that fire, we'll light the Easter candle, which will be taken up in procession to its place of honor in the sanctuary. And that candle represents Christ being our light. It's the Christ candle. Then the exalted will be sung, a hymn that proclaims the great mystery that is before us. There will be several readings from scripture that lay out for us the history of salvation, with the culmination of the history of salvation with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And normally the lights would be dimmed and then brought up at the time of the Gloria. And normally we would bring people into the church on that blessed evening. That is to say that people who wanted to become Catholic normally would be made Catholic on that evening. They would be baptized and confirmed and receive their first Holy Communion. But this year it's going to have to happen at a later date. In any case, we will plan on live streaming that Mass beginning at 8.30 p.m. Then for Easter Sunday, we will live stream an Easter Mass at 9 a.m. in English and 11 a.m. in Spanish. So this week coming up is truly a Holy Week. Please find some ways that you might enter into that spirit of Holy Week. And I want you to know that I think of you often. I'm praying for you. And I know that it's not the same when you have to merely watch and listen to Mass from home, but we're trying our best to keep you connected. May God bless you all, and always stay awesome.